Hey everyone, uh, welcome to today's live stream on how to detoxify your liver naturally. We're going to be going over an overview of the three liver phases. We are going to be covering tests that are really important when you're trying to detoxify your body. And we're gonna talk about some different things that you can do naturally to help the liver. We wanna remember that even though we're saying liver detoxification, this does happen all over the body, but for simplicity and for ease of understanding, we're, we're gonna apply it right now to the liver. So I'm Sandy, I am a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and whole body healing coach. Anything you hear today is for educational purposes only. Please talk to your doctor before making any changes to your medication, your supplements, your diet, et cetera, et cetera. And <laughs> I'm actually smiling right now because when I turned on the live stream, I can hear Eric in the background going, I'm the letter A. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> it's just so bloody cute. Um, so I'm going to try to stay as focused as possible. And every once in a while, I just hear him singing to the baby. And I think it's, it's just adorable. Um, all right. So let's get started. Um, now I'm going to share my screen so that I can show you a diagram. Uh, na, na. There we go. Boom. All right, so here's my whole body approach. I hope that you guys can see it. We are talking about the liver today. I have lots of other videos on the thyroid and mindset. I like to use a whole body approach because the body functions as a whole. If you want to heal the body, you need to address the entire body and not just the body. The mind is really important. The spirit is really important. Um, so if you are interested in coaching with the whole body approach, then you can definitely go to my website, www.motivatedtoheal.com. Okay, now I'm going to do this, hopefully quickly. There we go. Not too bad. Um, all right. So what does the liver do? The liver functions to store sugar. It regulates blood sugar. It neutralizes free radicals. It stores vitamins, it stores minerals and other nutrients, it recycles and helps to produce red blood cells, it produces and stores protein, it produces bile to detoxify and to help in fat digestion. It actually regulates and metabolizes hormones. So in my whole body approach, we work on everything, but if there was one thing that I could work on, well, I'd probably say mindset, but the liver, the liver is, is the biggest one or detoxification in general is, is what I would work on. So the, these three phases that we're going to be talking about today. So that's the other main function that the liver does is it de detoxifies chemicals, hormones, neurotransmitters, all sorts of things. It breaks down and makes it so that the body can get rid of it safely. Um, so let's take another look at another picture of where the liver is located, just in case you haven't seen it. Um, where is the button, screen share? They should have like a um, like a control function that I can do this really quickly. Okay, so here's the liver. That's the organ that we're talking about. These are the three phases of detoxification. You have phase one, which is happening at the cytochrome P450 enzymes. You have your oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis, hydrogenation, dehalogenation. So what does that mean? Adding oxygen, removing oxygen, adding water, removing water, and removing halogens. So when you have a chemical or a neurotransmitter that needs to be detoxified, it's going to enter phase one. And phase one is going to prepare it either for phase two, or it's going to be enough to have it safely leave the body. So if it leaves the body, it's going to go right over to phase three, which this doesn't say phase three, but this would be considered phase three, the elimination of toxins. Um, so it can skip right over to phase three or it goes to phase two. And when it goes to phase two, what happens is it's often a lot more toxic. Now, then it will go through some of these pathways to detoxify. And then again, it will go to phase three and leave the body. Now I'm just going to quickly go stop sharing. There we go. So you don't have to just sit and look at my picture and you can 
talk to me instead. Um, all right. So signs of liver dysfunction, hormone imbalance, acne, rashes, obesity, abnormal fat metabolism, histamine issues, a slow metabolism, acid reflux, indigestion, nausea is a big thing. If you're nauseous, you can really point to some toxicity issues. So IBS, depression, brain fog, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibro, reoccurring infections, blood sugar problems. So the list of symptoms can really overlap with a lot of other functions in the body. So hormone imbalance, can be from other things like the thyroid. It can it can be contributing your uh, sex hormones. You can run a Dutch and look at that. So we don't want to focus on the symptoms. We want to run proper testing to find out what's going on, especially when we're looking at the phase two detoxification. That is really important because a lot of things that you can do can actually cause damage to the body. You're actually damaging the body, not going through detoxification. So a lot of times people start the candida diet, for instance, and they think, oh, is this just detox? Is this a healing reaction? And sometimes it is, sometimes it's die off, but other times your body might be reacting to something that you're taking because you have an impaired detoxification pathway. And when that pathway is not functioning and not able to detoxify, you're gonna get an actual buildup of more toxic chemicals. So you end up doing more harm than good. Um, all right, so we can look at this picture here. <laughs> okay, so this is phase one and phase two, cytochrome P450 enzymes and your conjugation pathways. So here it's showing, if you want to pause your screen, it's showing actually all of the enzymes that are going to be related to genetic testing. So if you run a genetic test and you have different SNPs, whether they're heterozygous or homozygous, they're going to tell you the enzyme. And if, depending on the program that you're running it through, it should tell you where, what, what that um, enzyme is doing. So you can actually see here in the body, uh, in the liver, which phase, which enzyme is being affected. Uh, and there's some different cofactors that are needed. So for phase one, vitamin B2, B3, B6, um, B9, so that's folate, B12, glutathione, all those things. So you can just pause the, 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 um, the live stream and take a look at all the different cofactors today. I just want to give you a brief overview. I do have my full liver detoxification course, which goes a lot more in depth. Um, so you can also check that out. Okay. So phase one is using the cytochrome P450 enzymes. And like I said, some of it is when it goes into phase one, it's immediately ready to be excreted and others have to go through phase two. Um, if you're having multiple food and chemical sensitivities, it normally means that your phase one pathway is running too quickly for your phase two to keep up with. And what you want to do, you can temporarily slow down your phase one. We'll talk about some, um, some supplements that will slow it down, but you want to work on phase two. And that's where you need to be running the test to see what's going on. Because if you're adding things, if you think you're having issues with methylation and you start adding some um, methylated vitamins like um, B12 and MTHF, or you add some methionine or some SAMe, you could run into problems if you have an upregulated CPS enzyme. Uh, so you wanna run some tests to see what's going on. Um, the other thing that happens in phase one detox is it produces a lot of free radicals. So supporting the body with antioxidants is a really good idea. I love juicing for that. Uh, some things like uh, broccoli sprouts are really great, but if you're having sulfur issues, you're gonna wanna be a little bit more careful with that. Um, now, a good indicator of how your phase one is doing is how you feel after you drink coffee. So coffee is one of those things that's metabolized by phase one. So if you drink coffee and you're like me, I can drink caffeine and I will, it might spike my energy really quickly, but then it's gone. It's just very fast. Where if you're someone like uh, Eric, he drinks coffee and if he drinks it in the afternoon, he's not going to sleep at night. So it's, his phase one is a little bit more sluggish. So ideally we want phase one and phase two to be in balance. We want them both to be 
running really well. If your phase one is sluggish, it means you're not really even starting your detoxification process and you might be gaining weight so that the body can store toxins. A lot of times people are like, I can't lose weight, I can't lose weight because they're focusing on only losing fat instead of helping the body remove the toxins that are stored in the fat. And if the body's storing toxins in the fat, it's not gonna wanna let go of those toxins. They're safe where they are. Um, arthritis is another big one because the body is gonna push the toxins away from the organs, away from the brain, and it's gonna go into the joints. Um, so if you do try, if you are overweight and you are trying to lose weight and you do lose weight really quickly, then you wanna make sure that you're getting some antioxidant support on board and really working on phase two and three detox so that those those toxins can leave your body. Otherwise you, you do up your risk of, of different diseases. Cancer is a big one. Um, so different things that we can do to speed up phase one is to have your cruciferous vegetables. If you have a problem with sulfur, you're not going to be able to do this, but for people who can tolerate sulfur, things like cabbage and broccoli and Brussels sprouts are really going to help. Um, different vitamins that you need by B1, all your Bs are going to be essential for any processes in the body. Vitamin C is important. Magnesium, iron, glutathione is really important. Things like milk thistle really help phase one, dill seeds, caraway. Um, so that's gonna help phase one start moving faster. Now, if you're one of those people who have multiple food and chemical sensitivities, I was one of those, my phase two was just like broken. Um, then you're gonna wanna be doing things like curcumin, turmeric, uh, you can do a capsaicin, you can do clove oil, quercetin. Some people genetically can't handle quercetin. Um, so if you are COMT uh, plus, uh, homozygous or heterozygous, you might have some issues with Kristen. Um, and then you can use uh, calendula also helps to speed things, to slow things down. Um, and grapefruit juice, grapefruit juice is a, a good one, which tastes gross, but it does work. So if you're, you can do that temporarily. We don't want to just, oh, look, I'm taking turmeric and I'm feeling better without working on phase two. So you do it short term and, and then get to the root cause and get phase two uh, functioning a lot better. All right, so phase two has those six pathways. So sulfation is adding a sulfur. So, so it's adding sulfate. The, the sulfur from your food that you eat needs to actually go through phase six, which is the transsulfuration pathway, methylation, transsulfuration, or sulfoxidation, whichever you want to call it. And it needs to go through that first in order to have that sulfur, sulfate group available to bind to the toxins. Um, glucuronidation is adding glucuronic acid. Now this one is really important for people who have taken Accutane because Accutane damages this pathway in the liver. And you might also see high bilirubin. Now you can use something called D-limonene that really helps. Um, glutathione conjugation pathway, we're gonna see how the body can actually make its own glutathione and if that is being utilized too quickly, then we do need to get it through our diet. Coffee enemas are a great way to boost your uh, glutathione levels. You can also take, um, I like liposomal glutathione by Quicksilver. You can also use Apex Energetics has a really great uh, a subdermal um, glutathione that I've used really successfully. Uh, but you do have to be careful sometimes if you're having issues with sulfur, glutathione is going to cause problems. And it's one of those things, it's a major detoxifier. So start slow. We have to get into this. More is not better or faster is not always better. Slow and steady wins, wins the race because when we're healing, it is not a, a sprint. It is a marathon. We need to go slow and allow the body time. We don't want to be, oh, I need to be healthy now in order for me to be happy. That's a whole mindset issue. And I do definitely discuss that in other videos. Um, so the acetylation pathway adds acetyl-CoA. The amino acid conjugation pathway is gonna be adding things like glycine and cysteine and glutamine and methionine and taurine and glutamic acid and aspartic acid. That's all gonna be coming from your diet. Your body can generate a lot of these amino acids itself. So we have the essential amino acids that you do have to get from your diet. And then there's a lot of amino acids that your body can make itself. But again, we're gonna see when we get to the methylation pathway next, that more often than not, our body is not making those substrates because we're not, the top of the pathway is broken. So you'll understand in a second when I show the pathway. And most of you have probably already seen this already. 
So um, where am I? I do have notes. Um, so important tests to run to see what's going on with your phase two pathways, especially meth the methylation pathway. That's, that's the biggest one. I'm going to share my screen now and show you the diagrams. Right now, let me just pull up what I want to run. Mm -hmm. hmm. Share screen. There we go. Okay, so here is your methylation pathway. This is just a really big, basic one. It's got the, um, it shows how methionine goes to uh, SAM E, and then to SA. H and then to homocysteine. And if this is working properly, then everything is just flowing nicely. So if all your enzymes are functioning, we're going to be going through this. Everything's going to be balanced. Your, um, your metabolites will be balanced. You'll be producing a nice amount of homocysteine, but not too much. So we'll see homocysteine between six and seven. Any higher is indicating that you're having issues with the top of the pathway. When your, method, when your homocysteine drops below um, six, more so below five, then you'd want to really consider some upregulation in the CBS enzyme. Um, so if we take a look at the next diagram, which all of a sudden is really blurry and foggy, I have no idea why that happened. Okay, we'll look at this one. So this one is actually showing the enzymes that are involved in this process. So this is your CBS enzyme here. It's going to take homocysteine and put it through transsulfuration to create taurine and glutathione. And I have no idea why this image got all um, so dull. Don't know what happened. Um, so this this is a really nice diagram. It's showing you um, your methylation pathway, how uh, B12 and MTHFR go through here, you're looking at your neurotransmitters here, and you're looking at your ammonia pathway here. And I do apologize, I have no idea why that is all of a sudden so faint. Um, but we really wanna check our homocysteine. So you can, I like to use a serum homocysteine test. I find that's the most reliable. You can also run urinary amino acids test. You can. Um, the other thing I like to compare is your organic acids test, which is going to show you uh, how well you're using your B12 and your folate. So if you're getting an extreme high or an extreme low, you want to look into that and add in some, um, some methylated um, methyl donors. It's quite, quite important. Now, what you don't want to do is add them in too quickly. If you do that, you can increase detoxification to a very unsafe level, like really unsafe. So lower is better, low and slow. Um, so start really slow if you're adding in any methylated factors. Um, lithium plays a really big role in the use of B12, so you can run a urinary essential elements test to see what is going on with your lithium levels. And um, if you need to, you can run a blood test. Uh, if you have a lot of anxiety, lithium is, you know, a really good thing to consider and you want to might want to look into testing that or supplementing at a very low dose. The lithium is not the medication. It is a um, it's a mineral. So you can take it in the form of lithium or take in a really nice low dose and test if you want to or uh, use that and then you can increase your B12 after that. Now, the other thing that we would like to to test is genetic testing. If you're having problem incorporating any of these nutrients, you're starting to get some um, reactions. I've started to offer some genetic testing in my coaching, not normally in the beginning because most people don't need it. And I find applying a label in the beginning of your your healing process is, is not great. You should get some mindset work on board so that you've already let go of those labels of those sick labels, those attachments to your illness. And when you're there at that mindset, then run the genetic testing and, and see what's going on. Now, um, that's going to show you a percentage of dysfunction. It's not, or a likelihood of dysfunction. It's not giving you the exact picture. You really want to run the homocysteine and the B12 uh, and the folate and the urinary amino acids to check what's really going on and then use it along with your genetic testing. Don't go just by the genetic testing because 
again, it's a percentage of expression. We all start out with a reserve on the body. And when that starts to become depleted, that's where we're going to see dysfunctions start to occur. And the more stress, the more toxins that we have in our life, the more stress is going to be putting on these liver pathways and certain substances put more stress on other, on, on certain pathways. Like I used to not have any problem having sulfur foods until I went to a really high fat paleo diet. And when I did that, I was consuming an insane amount of sulfur and my sulfur pathway just fell apart so that my, I ended up having um, my CVS enzyme was upregulated. I was having trouble with my urea cycle and you want to get a lot of balance in your life and your nutrition so that you're not doing more harm than good with your diet. Um, so we all have this reserve and the more stress we put on these pathways, the more dysfunction starts to occur. Now they're not totally not functioning because if they weren't functioning at all, we would be dead. So there is still some degree of functioning when you're heterozygous, it's less likely that you're going to be expression, expressing the dysfunction. And when you're homozygous, it's more likely to, to express the dysfunction or the way you can look at it is if you're homozygous, it's not going to take as much stress to cause this to start to dysfunction. Um, so genetic testing, it, it does give you useful information as long as you're not going to apply the label. I used to walk around saying I have lupus and a lot of people that, well, I, I'm MTHFR and it's like, okay, so um, you don't have to be associated with that label. And if you're there at the mindset, then go ahead and run the genetic testing. Um, it, it is quite complex. There are some programs that can help you like um, I like NutraHacker. NutraHacker is a really great one. Amy Yasko has a um, program that you can stick your 23andMe in or run a methylation um, path um, test through her, genetic testing through her. Um, so those are options there. Now, phase three is all about elimination, eliminating the toxins from phase one and phase two. That's going to be happening through your kidneys primarily and through the bile. So the bile leaves the liver into the gallbladder, is dumped into the large intestine and into, into the intestines, and it needs to go, it needs to get out. So something that we can really do to help is a liver and gallbladder flush. And I personally don't believe when you do a liver and gallbladder flush that you're flushing stones and what you see in the toilet is stones. But when you take a large amount of oil on an empty stomach, it is going to cause your body to dump a lot of bile and the, the flush that you're doing along with it is going to make sure that none of it stays in the system. Um, so herbs to support the kidneys, you can do, uh, juicing is really great. Bell has a kidney tea that you can use. It's actually, the, the brand is called Bell and it's called kidney tea. So you can get that on board. Um, glandulars are great. Um, if you do suffer from constipation or you might not right now, you might have some magnesium or other supplements on board, but if you've had chronic constipation, that's a really good indicator that you want to work on your um, small intestine, really do a, a good flush of the small and large intestine to make sure everything is out. Uh, when I was healing. I used to be very chronically constipated, like five days was the norm for me. And nobody told me that there was anything wrong, right? Until you start looking into this. And I did uh, a modified, I created my own cleanse, pulled it from a, a different areas, but you guys can look at Dr. Jensen's bowel and tissue cleanse. And I did that and passed some, some fun stuff. Um, so if you are suffering from chronic constipation, you do want to make sure that everything is clear before you start working on, on the liver. You don't need to be doing, uh, and I would really recommend not trying to kill candida or parasites or protozoa until your liver and your detoxification is really working well because your parasites, protozoa, um, candida, all of those things, they hold on to a lot of metals and other toxins. And when you try to kill them, it's going to be released. And if this is not flowing well, that, oh, this is a uh, healing reaction. No, you're, you're damaging your body because your body cannot process the toxins. So we want to make 
sure that these three phases are supported as much as possible before we start to kill anything. And I do a lot of this, this work before even adding anything for heavy metals. It's very, very rare that I'm going to do heavy metal work before I've got this running, um, your, your three liver phases uh, running decently. Um, now, other things to help move bile is going to be dandelion, malic acid. There's uh, a supplement called Stonebreaker. You have sunflower less than. Um, if you look, if you go back and pause and, and look at the, the picture of how the body you does the methylation cycle and then it goes down from homocysteine, your body is going to, from there, create glutathione and taurine. Now, if methylation is not working, you're not going to be producing a lot of glutathione or a lot of taurine. So that's going to be where you're, you're going to want to support that. Now, if your CBS enzyme is upregulated, then we're going to see too much taurine and we don't want to supplement that. Then that's a whole other protocol in itself to try to regulate that CBS enzyme and then get, um, get the top part of the, the cycle working. And um, yeah, so the flushes are going to get everything going, kidney cleanses, and the other way we detoxify is through the skin. That's not the most efficient way. So if you're seeing a lot of skin issues, look first at the liver. Um, it's going to give you a lot of answers when you start to get those the bile flowing and, and get your kidneys working as optimally as possible, then you should see a reduction in the effects on your skin. Now, the other thing that's really important and why we want to get methylation working in particular is because your body is actually able to methylate DNA and it's able to turn on epigenetics, turn off these negative genes. So when methylation is not working, we want to focus there if we're having any autoimmune conditions because that's going to allow the body to silence the genes that aren't supposed to be uh, expressed. All right, so I'm not the best at seeing comments on the live stream on YouTube. It's funny, I saw um, I saw a live stream the other day come across my Facebook page, and I was like, wow, you definitely have really high tech because I have no idea to do that. I had to come on today just to figure out how to get this to work again, because it's been so long since I've done a YouTube live stream. Um, all right, so we've got a couple of questions that I'm gonna answer quickly because I do hear Caden yelling at his daddy. Um, it's almost Caden's bedtime, so he gets a little bit grouchy. Okay, so Lisa says, my son has low motility and constipation. His bowels are very light brown. Um, so that's indicating he could need a little bit more fat support help breaking down his fat. So things like sunflower lecithin or getting in a bile salt uh, would help. So you'd, you'd be taking that after the meal. Um, and once a year, cream colored stool, that's pretty normal. Every once in a while, we're going to eat too much fat that we can handle. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, if he's really constipated, I would add in some magnesium. Consider SIBO. SIBO might be something that's causing the constipation. A uh, methane SIBO causes a lot of constipation. So um, maybe do a SIBO test. I do have a training on SIBO. You can check that out on my YouTube page. Um, how to increase bile. So we kind of already went over that. And magnesium you give until bowel tolerance. So there are different forms. Citrate is, works really well, but on a regular basis can lower your copper transport protein. So we don't want to do that on a regular basis. Now, uh, magnesium glycinate is for the majority of the population, very calming and also helps. It doesn't work as well. It doesn't have as much of a bowel action, but you can go to bowel tolerance. If you do find he has any anxiety afterwards, then it's a good indicator that his glutamate is too high in his brain and um, because the glycine can convert that way. And then we have magnesium malate, which is going to uh, have the malic acid, which is also going to help with bile flow. So that might be one that you consider. Uh, and again, it's, it's to bile, to bile tolerance, and you will need more of that one than you would of a citrate. Um, definitely, you can do enemas if, if he's not going every two, three days. 
Um, but you're going to want to look into the root causes. And SIBO is a big is a big one, but you do need to clear the large intestine first. I can't stress that enough. Make sure you clear parasites, protozoa, and their biofilm. Otherwise, you're just going to... SIBO is hard enough on its own to clear without having the root cause, one of the root causes still there. Um, so dandelion Kim is really great for phase three. It helps get your bile flowing. And like anything, some people don't tolerate it. It's a herb. So there can be an actual allergic type reaction to it. Um, so if uh, the first time I drank dandelion root tea, this was many, many years ago, I, I did like a full brew and I drank a whole cup and I was sick. Like I was sick for days. So the next time I did a really light brew and only had a tiny amount and I was okay. And now I can handle it no problem because my liver is functioning a lot better. But again, go slow um, because you don't want to dump a lot more than what you can handle. Um, so binders don't always cause constipation. That is individual. So a lot of people take binders and it gives them diarrhea because of the, the effect of moving the toxins. Um, I don't use psyllium husk powder or apple pectin because both of them will feed SIBO if you have it. If you've ruled out SIBO, go ahead. Um, citrus pectin is really great heavy metal binder also, uh, but again, it is contraindicated with SIBO. Uh, Sandra says uh, using beet juice powder. So beet juice is a great antioxidant. It's great for the liver, but it is high oxalate. So I wouldn't use it on a regular basis. Even if you don't have an oxalate issue, which you know, I used to not have an oxalate issue until I went raw vegan. Yes, I've, I've been there, done a lot of things back on my healing journey. And consuming a huge amount of oxalates led me to develop some, some severe oxalate issues. And it took me a couple of years to detoxify them. Um, I have new, used neither of those in li liver detox, Christine. So she asked about red pitayaya or whatever, I don't even know how to pronounce that. My French is going to kick in or dragon fruit. Um, I've eaten dragon fruit. I think that's the spiky thing that looks like a dragon egg. Um, is that a dragon fruit? I don't even know. So, but I never, I never actually use them for liver detox. I like to focus on phase two and phase three, um, getting bile flowing and getting that methylation, uh, transulfuration, urea cycle, all of that working. All right, so I don't think there were any other questions. Um, mind you, I have no idea how to look at the comments on YouTube, so that wouldn't help anyway. So I hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. If you are looking for coaching, if you want to run these tests that I've talked about, if you're looking to do the mindset work on top of healing the entire body and working on the body as a whole, again, go to www.motivatedtoheal.com. Click on work with me. You can check out my coaching packages. I do have some discounts and some payment plans available for people when they sign up for a free health assessment, just so that I can see if you, you're a good fit to work with me. It is, a, it is work. I don't magically heal you. If you want to make changes in your life, then it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. If you want to stay the same, then keep doing what you're doing, right? So you've got to put the effort in and take that first step. And it's amazing how the, the path just unfolds along the way. I saw a really cool Facebook video. I think Jasmine just posted it. Um, I love that. All you have to do is take the first step and everything else unfolds on the way. But in my coaching, I work on detoxification big time right off the bat. We work on proper nutrition, a nice balanced whole food diet so that you're not causing more damage with the diet that you're on. I work on sex hormones and adrenals and the thyroid, neurotransmitters. We, we work on rebuilding the body first for a few months or however long it takes, like the average is anywhere between three to six months. So we work on that. And then we start going after those root causes while working on mindset because people get so focused on what's going on in the body. And if you think that the pathogens and the metals and the toxins are damaging your body, yes. But if you live in a chaotic, toxic environment and your thoughts are constantly very negative and fearful and anxious um, or very depressed or you're, you're living in the future or the past, you're, you're worrying about things or you're dwelling on emotional traumas, then 
those are going to do just as much damage as what's going on inside. So we want to have that holistic approach on the body, but also on the mind and the spirit and passion and purpose. That's a really big one. I do a lot of business coaching with my clients when they start to feel better and really want to to have a purpose and a passion in life, whether it's a career or um, I don't like to call it work. It's not, it doesn't have to be work. If you're living your passion, it definitely isn't work. All right, so you guys take care. Have a great weekend and I will be going live or posting a live testimonial next week. So I'm really excited about that. All right, guys, you have a great night. Bye.